morning ladies and gentlemen this is a new episode of windows as usual we do have a very important topic and i promise that this episode is going to be a very special one as we do have very prominent guests here let me first welcome our dear guest live here in the studio professor dr ibrahim al-ghazawi professor of international law hello sir hello and dr hussein shiraba our economic and political analyst thank you very much for being with us sir thank you ma'am as we are moving uh, forward and moving closely to start a new year, to start 2016, about uh, the foreign relations of Egypt in 2015. What were the achievements achieved on the diplomatic front? What were the results of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi's visits to many of the world uh, regions, I should say? It's not only the West, but what about Africa? It's not only the UN General Assembly in which, Gen in which uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi addressed uh, the, uh, uh, the UN General Assembly there with a very important speech but also with uh, his talks on the sidelines even of uh, uh, those uh, very prominent meetings in which the head of the state participated in, as I said, topping the list of the UN General Assembly, uh, moving to the climate summit uh, in Paris, uh, many um, occasions, and uh, the details of these visits, the results of these visits, the results of the diplomatic activities uh, of uh, Egypt, uh, of Egyptian foreign ministry to be accurate during a whole year. Uh, this is going to be our topic of today. Uh, let's start as I like or I am a fanatic when it comes to Africa, to the black continent. Mm -hmm. Let's start with uh, what I call Egypt's return to Africa. First on the political how do you see, sir, Egypt returning back to Africa, let's be frank, as approximately in 30 or 35 years, we were not that close to our black continent as the case with Nasser, for, for example. So how do you see the political uh, impact of our return to our continent? Well, let me start with the um, uh, congratulations to Egyptians and, and, uh, and all Egyptians and Arabs and Muslim Christians uh, on the, uh, the two uh, holy occasions of Christmas and the birth of Prophet Muhammad. Peace. Peace be upon them. And wish uh, all Egyptians and Arabs, Muslims and Christians the best in the year to come. Mm -hmm. And then back to Africa and Egypt. Yeah. And we have to admit that uh, it has been a colossal mistake mm -hmm. for Egypt to destinate itself away from Africa mm -hmm. in the last uh, 10 or 20 years probably. Uh, simply because well, our depth is in Africa. Mm -hmm. Our strength is in Africa. Strategic depth. Strategic uh, yes. depth in Africa. Yeah. I'm not only Let's talking describe it this way. Yeah. And, and strategic is, is really comprehensive because mm -hmm. we talk about culture, we talk mm -hmm. about uh, uh, ideological background, we mm -hmm. talk about, uh, talk about uh, cultural and social, social relations, which is, you know, very important. And let me take specifically the, the, the chronic problem that we suffer from today, which is the Renaissance uh, Dam. Yeah, go on dam to talk in, in, in detail Ethiopia. about the Renaissance Dam yeah. and, the, and, and its impact. Yeah. But uh, if you permit me, sir, whenever it comes to strengthen uh, our ties with the, the uh, African states, I think it means a lot as a message to the international community. And the Africans, if they unite together, they can be uh, such a big, power. Yeah, such a big power. And th th such a big power, and this is really true. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, because I have been to most of the African countries in several locations. Mm -hmm. and most right. of Yes. And, and uh, I, I was, all of, all of, the, in the time I was very much astonished at the how, how uh, warm relation and warm appreciation they have to Egypt. And uh, in everywhere, everywhere, I've gone to more than 10 or 12 countries on different occasions in the last couple of years. And I started even visiting Africa in 1990 at the first, uh, you know, visit. Uh, Which country, sir? It was Namibia in South uh -huh. Africa. It was, at that time, it was part of South Africa. Uh -huh. So, you know, whenever uh, um, I had this opportunity, I discovered that uh, we have a, a, a very uh, precious relations that mm -hmm. we never, were, we were never able to invest on. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not talking only about the official channels, I'm talking about the popular ones. Mm -hmm. um, why Africa is, is such a big importance for us mm -hmm. 
it's simply a, a, a very big and open market and it's very rich resources, natural resources. And, it's, and, and also we have to remember that the Nile Basin... Let me Nile see Basin. this opportunity, sir, mm. before moving to the economic aspect of mm -hmm. the story. What were the people uh, saying about Egypt? I mean, uh, in those countries you have visited, mm -hmm. What was their impression about the Egyptians or Egypt? How well, were they talking about Egypt or the Egyptians? Well, they, they usually appreciate Egypt being part of Africa. Mm -hmm. and, but, but some of them was very much, uh, um, you know, uh, critiqued. So the fact that Egypt is not a, a, an African country as it has been before. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, in the last uh, probably seven or eight years. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they, ha they, they were right. I mean, you know, they, they were right. The Egypt was away from Africa, and we have lost a lot by, by you know, drifting away from Africa. But we are back. Exactly. At least, exactly. At least we are yeah, stepping we're, forward. We're st yeah, this is a, 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 one, um, a, a one step forward mm -hmm. that should be followed by many other steps. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you that this is not an easy task. It takes years and years to... Mm -hmm you know, get back the, your previous, um, you know, status in, in Africa. But let me tell you that in, in the popular level of the normal people, mm -hmm. Egypt has uh, a good status in the hearts of the Africans. Most everywhere, important. everywhere. Yes, yeah. sir. Uh, Dr. Shreba, when it comes to the economic aspect, let's be very frank, and, and you prefer this way. Um, as far as I know, when it comes to Africa, and when it comes to... Um, specific re economic relations with Egypt, I think the only one symbol was the Arab contractors. You would find an office for the Arab contractors, uh, contractors approximately in every African country doing great, a great job even for the government there. But now the case should be much different because we have opened the market. What fields of economic cooperation should be on top of our agenda in your opinion? Uh, let's talk first of all that Egypt is Africa. Mm -hmm. and it is the main nation in Africa. Mm -hmm. This is during uh, Nasser times. Mm -hmm. Although some, some uh, people have not recognized Africa very well, uh, were ruling Egypt, but um, today when you see President Sisi and his visits, it's a very important step to us. Why it's very important? I'm going to talk about the economy-wise. Yes. When you talk about the economy, the Africa is still a virgin land for us mm -hmm. and a virgin market for us. And uh, the raw materials in Africa is there. Mm -hmm. uh, people are eager to have you back, mm -hmm. not that you want to go and spend money over there or invest like... Uh, some people from the Gulf, whatever the, the country is. Mm -hmm. The people in the Gulf, they are only investing their money. Mm -hmm. But the people of Egypt there is not investing money. They are investing the best relationship between Egypt in the past and Africa in the future. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to merge both of them in the form of a new form, which is what are your need? We are brothers. We will help each other. So if we need electricity and power, mm -hmm. we can. And you said Arab contractors mm -hmm. have an, a door over there. Every yeah. place there is a door for them. What about agriculture? We are uh, going into a stage very soon, it's not uh, very far, that we will be having a very limited uh, water resource. It's not for Egypt only, but it's worldwide. It's, it's going to be one of the big problems. Mm -hmm. So Africa, other countries, they have land, they have the water, even they have uh, manpower, mm -hmm. and they need your manpower to assist them and educate them, Do let them do this, even having something like at least five million people can move out easily mm -hmm. into Africa. Yeah. and be uh, the, the great supporter to them. We can, uh, we are importing uh, wheat from everywhere. Mm -hmm. Why can't we 
raise it up there in Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They will gain some money. We will gain this even less price than the, what we are gaining from. And uh, we can help them uh, by making housing, hospitals, uh, lots of things, mm -hmm. their needs on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And we get our even product and we still save our water, mm -hmm. which is when you have 90 million, you need not the 55 billion uh, cubic, uh, cu meter. cubic meters, mm -hmm. you need 90 billion, the million, the thousand mm -hmm. cubic meter per person mm -hmm. a year. So you will save some, some water for doing other things. Yeah. So, and also, we were not producing, by the way, cars mm -hmm. in Egypt, but we did have a company, it's a go government company, it's called Al Nasr. Al -Nasr. Mm -hmm. And it was assembling uh, yep. a car from mm -hmm. Europe, mm -hmm. but uh, let's say the components of this was about only 20, maximum yep. 25%. Mm -hmm. So why don't we go into Africa mm -hmm. and do a full complete car, mm -hmm. 100%. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to import from Asia or Europe mm -hmm. It'll be because we have very good scientists and we have very we have, excellent experts mm -hmm. and we can do the car easily. Korea started after us. Mm -hmm. Japan started with us. Watch out. Yeah, watch, watch out. Mm -hmm. Their cars are conquering the United States. Yep. States, you find the, the yeah. Japanese car out yeah. there. Mm -hmm. So why don't we have ourselves and have this car either manufactured here in Egypt mm -hmm. or in another one of the good African countries? Mm -hmm. Because we can do it. Because we need a specific car for this climate, for this weather. And when the people in Africa recognize that this car is produced by African the first thing they will take, they will take this car. Mm -hmm. Because they are very loyal to what? To the African products. Mm -hmm. The other thing, Belgium. Belgium, one of the, the high things or the highlight of our is chocolates. Mm -hmm. Where is the cocoa, cocoa beans? Yeah. Where they get them? Mm -hmm. It's from Africa. Mm -hmm. Can't we do a chocolate for ourselves? Mm -hmm. Like an African? Can we create we need to create a new a lot of potentials yeah. and a lot of so uh, the economy fortunes we have. so the economy with africa it's the future for not african it's for the entire world mm -hmm. asia the 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 what you call the percentage of uh, 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 the economy raising there GDP? Because, yeah, it doesn't go more than, let's say, uh, on an average for all these countries, it doesn't go more than mm -hmm. 2.3, 2 2.4. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> when you go to Africa, mm -hmm. this would be at least between 6 and 8 mm -hmm. percent. Watch the difference. Africa still virgin. Raw materials, land, uh, no pollutions. Mm -hmm. All these things are there. So returning back to Africa is the gate, or it's going to be, inshallah, it's the gate for our the, gate for the whole world. For the whole world, and especially for Egypt. Yeah, we have to start. And, because and we, Africans, we have to start about for Africans, of course. You know, whenever, um, whenever we are all saying that we are all Africans, it's Egypt's fate to be Arab, African.